Jellica, you ready? Yeah. All right, Leo? Yes. Okay, here we go. Atomic batteries are power. Everything old is new again. America's entertainment pop culture talk show. It may well possess a rudimentary intelligence. You try to think, but nothing happens. There's a great disturbance in the force. Hello, I'm Mr. Ray. Come on, Mark, like a job for me. Where's the goodies? Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. I bet you wouldn't have done anything like this if Mom and Dad were here. You filthy criminal. Excuse me while I whip this out. Go ahead. Make my day. Here are your hosts, Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. She was right there all along, using us for her little war, smiling at us with those knowing eyes, making me believe in a better future that I couldn't see because it wasn't real. And now here we are, our friends shattered and corrupted. Uh oh, welcome to Everything Old is New Again. We're with some friends, old and new today. Unfortunately, David Cohen cannot be aware, aware, be with us, but we have a very special guest. Picture yourself as a kid at the age of like eight or 11 years old. There's a pandemic going on. It's all beyond your control. There's no school, there's no scouting, there's no sports, there's no plays, there's no activities at all. And you're banished to the house with no one your age but your siblings to hang around with. And this goes on for week after week after week into month into now three months and counting. Ugh. What do you do besides listening to everything old is new again? Well, if you're my 11-year-old daughter, Angelica, and my... How old are you, Leo? Eight. Eight-year-old son, Leo. You find and share a favorite, I'm going to call it Saturday morning type animated TV series with uh, with each other. And in this instance, on Everything Old is New Again, we're going to be talking Steven Universe and more with Sapphire herself from Steven Universe, Erica Luttrell. Now, let's uh, let's let's look at Erica a little bit before we get into this. I have to introduce her and in, in, acknowledge that she was born in Toronto, Canada, to a Tanz- I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Tanzanian mother and an American father. We'll get that correct in a moment. Um, she's the youngest of four daughters. She began acting at the age of two, starring in numerous commercials from Pampers to Cadillac, before booking her first lead role in a television series at the young age of nine years old. After several seasons on uh, Shining Time Station, the animated series The Magic School Bus, co-starring comedy legends George Carlin and Lily Tomlin, respectively, and others. And if she did that, she migrated to L.A. Then she became uh, someone that appeared on SEAL Team, Westworld, which we want to talk about, the CVS uh, series Salvation, and uh, guest starred on Magnum P.I., iZombie, Arrow, NCIS, and more, and continues to be the voice of many, many animated projects, including Steven Universe, Diablo 3, Injustice 2, Voltron, Call of Duty, Black Ops, I mean, it goes on and on, uh, Captain Underpants on Netflix, and of course, your middle name, which I'm going to mispronounce, I'll try it, Shukrani, means give thanks, and we're thankful for Erica Luttrell for joining us today on Everything Old is New Again. Thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure. This is actually so fun already. I'm, <laughs> this. I'm looking forward to correcting some pronunciations. Here we go. <laughs> Please do. First, how do we pronounce your name and your middle name? Okay. All right. I am Erica Shukrani Luttrell. So... And you are in in like no no small or or not good company. Everybody who is wonderful who I've known goes Luttrell. That is just what it looks like. So now uh, on it, it'll be right Luttrell. Then. Okay, great. I yeah, think it's yeah. so. I got the important one right. I don't know if you could say that, but uh, because with thank you got that right. And the country is Tanzania. That is where my mom's from. There we go. Yeah. So now yeah. everyone <laughs> is all up to date. We have like one minute left to our show. I'm kidding. Um, okay, amazing. Yes, yeah, that was beautiful. Seven thank minutes. you. Seven minutes. We have seven women. Seven, seven minutes. Seven Good minutes. Good job, Leo. Thank you. Let's Leo. get the Appreciate ball it. rolling. Um, <laughs> as we just heard, you're starting acting at a really young age. Now, if someone yeah. is not necessarily able to become a professional, but is going to be and have an interest in acting, whether it be at you know age nine or high school, anywhere in between. Um, would you suggest that be something that they do? And if so, why? If they're interested in it as a young person, oh, yeah. I mean, I would 100% suggest that they do it. 
That's my dog whining. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I. It's funny because I got into it when I was two. So at that time, obviously, I couldn't necessarily have chosen it at the outset. Um, but I've known and as I grew, obviously, became like much more passionate about it and learned a lot of things about it and uh, studied and then, you know, quite loved it. And obviously, it's cool as a kid to be the center of attention, obviously. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, but no, I mean, I've known also as an adult too, just kids who are incredibly passionate about it. And I, and, you know, I see it in their eyes and I think that it's if that's what you want to do, then you should be pursuing it. And, and can you gather uh, skills through that, um, you know, that are not something that you can get elsewhere? I mean, like public speaking and confidence. I mean, isn't it something, even though you don't, you're not going to be the movie star, as, you know, maybe you will be, but whoever's doing this yeah. at a certain age, can't you gather some of these skills and confidence? That Did, did you gather those skills from this? I did. I mean, I, I gathered them also from, from observing other people because I was working with some pretty cool actors, all, you know, adults in, in many instances, you know, obviously like George Carlin, Lily Tomlin, Dee Dee Kahn, like really, really cool people. Um, and I learned through observation. A lot of my early acting stuff, I was just kind of, you know, pretty much just like memorizing my lines, <laughs> showing up, doing the stuff. Except in the case of the Magic School Bus, that, of course, I got to read. But then learning by example, being around these like really talented uh, adults and seeing what they were doing and uh, doing my best to emulate that in the early days. Right. And uh, and I think that's what uh, Angelica is doing that herself sometimes. And many of the people yeah. that are listening, I'm sure, are involved because there's so many more activities now than when I was growing up. It was kind of like just sports but, and maybe scouting. And now there's so many things, <laughs> including acting and acting classes and theater everywhere. So I think it's a great yeah. thing for everybody to kind of get involved with and look look at the results. And, and uh, Angelica, just for the moments we have in this particular section she wants to focus a little bit and and describe to you her effect or the effect of steven universe and and your participation therein upon her so yeah. angelica you want to tell us is a little something to read kind of and we'll go from there yeah so um i kind of like wrote um almost like a mini like speech of how steven universe and your character really just impacted my life so i wanted to share that with you because of Steven Universe, I have learned important life lessons. Because of Steven Universe, I am slowly finding myself. Because of Steven Universe, I can relate to the characters' struggles and their most hilarious jokes. Because of Steven Universe, I have found my passion for cartooning and acting. Because of Steven Universe, I have gotten closer with my brother. Thank you, Steven Universe, for bringing light. Thank you, Steven Universe, for making me laugh and cry. Thank you, Steven Universe crew who I can count on to cheer me up. Thank you, Steam Universe, for making me the person I stand as today. Thank you, Erica, for making me smile as I as every time I watch your character grow, I smile. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. I'm so honored. I'm so moved. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was beautiful. Thank and you, you have a beautiful voice. Thank you so much. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. You're welcome. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a, it's a thank you fest here on Everything Old is New <laughs> <Thank> Again. <you. laughs> and I think that that's so interesting that a show like uh, this, and again, you're in so many others uh, that can, do you hear feedback uh, from, it's hard with an animated project for people to even know that it's you doing it. So, uh, right. you know, you go to the grocery store or whatever, people don't know, that's the voice of this one and that one. Um, so oh, totally. do you get some feedback elsewhere, or otherwise, like emails maybe or something like that? Like that and if you do what's the feedback and how does it make you feel i do it's funny because with steven universe in particular the fan base is so incredibly supportive and heartfelt and the way in which as you mentioned uh, it affected your lives is is so uh, incredibly moving i get teary when i read some of these things and in the very beginning actually i didn't even know uh what the character was going to be i had no sense of it i'd actually auditioned for garnet before the show had even begun. So I, yeah, I know. <laughs> so I, I, you know, and Rebecca Sugar had, had that audition and she knew, and she clearly saw that I would uh, fit as a part of her. So uh, I don't even recall that I even auditioned for Sapphire, quite frankly. I feel like I was called in for it and I thought it was gonna be one episode and it ended up being all these episodes. Um, and then when it first aired, I didn't even realize when my character's first episode was going to air. Uh, I just remember my Twitter completely blowing up. 
and just being surprised. I was like out, like having beverages with a friend somewhere. And uh, I was like, why am I getting all these pings? Like, I just keep getting all, what's going on? There were like 500 new followers of like, 30 minutes and I didn't know what was happening because I didn't realize it was airing and then I realized from all the comments of people just like gushing and being so happy that these characters existed what it was about and and I was uh, blown away and uh, for us well you know what I'm going to leave there for a moment because we do have a commercial break when we get back we're going to continue we're going to talk about a little about singing we're going to talk about Steven Universe we're going to talk about more of that with Erica Luttrell right after this and everything old is new again the crystal gems will always save the day and if you think we can we'll always find a way that's why the people of this world believe in me are the crystal gems will always save the day you're listening to everything old is new again america's entertainment pop culture talk show with douglas viviani and david cohen about that for a note this is douglas viviani here sans <laughs> david cohen but i'm with my kids believe it or not uh, erica luttrell <laughs> Let erica luttrell from oh my gosh you got it i got it right <laughs> but i won't get it right again but that's good i will, I will i'll edit that in every single time i pronounce your name and i'll put the right one in that you care to know, that's, you know. <laughs> and uh listen we're also here with leo viviani and we're talking all things steven universe saturday morning cartoons animation and i want to turn a little bit now uh, i want to just say first of all during the pandemic that this is an avenue of uh, what would you say help for lots of people to be able to find a new show to find something exciting that they haven't seen before and a show that has meaning and i haven't really seen too much of it but i've seen the effect on these two so i, I just want to thank you there and angelica's made a few questions up that she wants to ask i have tons but i'm not going to monopolize the time angelica tell us a question too you got here <laughs> okay hi so um this is a question i've been thinking of so you also play the role of pad paracha right yeah yeah so Yes, I do. Yeah, I thought so. Okay, so my question is, um, <laughs> um, who do you like um, playing the most, Sapphire or Pad Paracha, and why? Oh, goodness. Yeah. I mean, I honestly love them both. They're so, uh, they're such distinctly different versions of myself and my inner world. Pad Paracha is the smaller, shyer part of me, and Sapphire is the sort of more uh, serious, deep part of me. So it's kind of hard to separate in a way. I mean, obviously, I've spent a lot more time with Sapphire. Yeah. So uh, I guess maybe I'm a little bit more attached to her. Uh, yeah. But I love them both. Okay. <laughs> Jelly, you have another one to follow up? Uh, yeah. So this is, like, a lot different than the question I asked. But um, what is your favorite song um, from Steven Universe? And it can be a song that, like, you worked on. Or um, it could be a song that you weren't even in, but you just like it a lot. Do you have a favorite? Oh, goodness gracious. I mean, the the first song that we sang, you know, that I essentially, I don't know, hum sang in the very beginning when we, we first appeared, I quite loved. Ooh, that one, I, I quite love that one. But honestly, like the entire soundtrack to the movie. <laughs> yes. It's, so good and yeah. i myself can't listen to it without getting teary at points hmm. so i mean they're just such beautifully written songs yeah so i mean quite frankly the movie soundtrack <laughs> yeah i love i yeah. i listen to it as like like frequently like a lot whenever i can i'm right? just like yeah i love the soundtrack so tell us a little bit about the uh the show itself and then it ended and it went into a movie um yeah. Is there a general theme that runs through uh, the project that you think resonates with, with kids? Why are they uh, reacting so well to the show? I mean, a word that comes to me, the first word that came to my mind is acceptance. Yeah. You know, acceptance and understanding uh, and love. 
Yeah. I would say. I love those are three words. <laughs> and those are three reasons to watch the show, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah. Now, we heard you singing there somewhere over the rainbow and yes. it's coming on into our show here and when of course you sing on on Stephen University, you sing elsewhere. Um mm. what age did you start singing and uh what would you think would be the best way to start and develop your singing voice? Oh my goodness. Well, you know, what's funny is that I'm even still wanting to develop it even more here at my age. I, um, goodness, the best way to, to start and develop it. I mean, get into a class. Honestly, there are like some really cool apps out there that you can, um, actually a friend of mine, uh, created an app that I use called boxer size and it has like warm ups and stuff in it that I use sometimes before my, my voiceover recording sessions, just like one or two I'll do so that my voice is nicely warmed up and it helps you learn how to, um, not destroy your voice. I mean, I do a lot of video game, uh, voice recording too. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of screaming involved, a lot of battle chatter, and, uh, you know, if you don't do that right, if you're not sort of passing the wind through your vocal cords in the right way, you can kind of exhaust your voice and use it quite a bit, you know. So that's a good way of um, doing it. Just like doing warm ups, maybe getting a class, maybe taking a class at your school. I realize that's difficult right now. Yeah. <laughs> Zoom class. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but I took class when I was a kid uh, in my school. I, I, dis I decided to focus on sort of vocal stuff, partly because my whole family sings. I started singing in my family, in the car, going on like trips to cut down a Christmas tree, you know? Like we just sing, like my two of my sisters could do harmony at the time and two of us, me included, could not. <laughs> so <laughs> we would bring in the melody and the other two would would do the sort of harmonizing and my parents sang my dad is a, was a tenor and sang with the america uh, with the canadian opera chorus uh for a time and uh, like in the churches so it's been around me a lot and my sisters were also in musical theater so i was backstage hearing them that whole time and kind of wanted to emulate that so i mean for me i sing for myself a lot of the time and a, a, an interesting fun fact about the show is that about Steven Universe is that Rebecca Sugar also had heard those YouTube videos, one of which you just played, of me singing, and was like, oh, great, she can sing, fantastic. Okay, so she'll work for this. Like, it was another element in me sort of becoming a part of the Steven Universe family, so. And that was just me, myself, feeling nervous about singing in front of people, totally. And a friend of mine was like, you should just make YouTube videos, and people will, like, tell you, you sound good. <laughs> you might feel more confident. And, and obviously you did, right? It, it kind of worked, right? You, you it got some <laughs> it feedback. Did. And, <laughs> it kind of did. Because yeah. we asked Angelica to sing. She's she's been in some performances, and and you know she got on, and maybe your parents weren't like this because it sounded like you were able to share with them. But Angelica played uh, in Frozen, and she was uh, Elsa, oh, and sang that song and a couple of songs. And we never heard oh. any of it before the performance because she didn't want to. Really? So we looked yeah. at each other like, "Is that really her?" Uh, so we don't get to share wow. too much with it so um we're hoping that that'll develop over time yeah <laughs> i love it that's a tough song bravo <laughs> thank you <laughs> now leo i know you have a question or two why don't you ask the first question you ready have you ever seen a paparazzi gem and a sapphire gem in real life i've seen a sapphire gem but i haven't seen a paparazzi sapphire gem because i think paparazzi is from the sapphire family somehow uh so no i i've only seen one how about that, Leo? And and because yeah. for those who are not aware, those are uh, are strong. Um, I guess you'd say characters. Your character is Sapphire, and there's yeah. characters in the show, and you do need to watch the show to to see how they all interact and the gems interact <laughs> together. And I know this might confuse some people out there. <laughs> but we'll we'll. That's what I'm here is the sort of the voice of the, the you know the the guy that hasn't seen and gotten involved until just now with my kids this this time yeah. during the uh, the pandemic. And so I, you guys I love just it. Just started watching it during quarantine no my brother did i started watching it about a year or year or two years ago but i introduced it okay. to my brother in the quarantine because i thought he might like and we could get closer with it because we got a lot closer when we started watching it yeah we're on season four i love it we yeah. on season four and the, wow the yeah. the bad news is and i say this facetiously but they're staying up late at night 
They're sleeping together oh, in the no. same room as a little bit of pandemic dorm, we call it. <laughs> not the usual. And they're watching Steven Universe till like 12 at night, right, guys? <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that works. Yeah. So that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know that I'm not supposed to know that, but I know that. So. Yeah. I mean, that we in the Steven Universe family are very honest. <laughs> you know, we need your rest, also. Yeah. Now, just for the heck of it, you do a lot of others. Are there others that you think are worth a while that you're involved with? Let's talk about the animated situation for now that that you're yeah. voicing. I'm sure all of them are. But do any stick out that you'd say, hey, you know what? Take a listen to this one. Um. Well, you can go back and watch Voltron. That's a really cool show. And uh, <laughs> it's sort of like it, it's a show from my childhood that has that was re rebooted beautifully. And I play one of the sort of evil-ish, ish. I won't tell you the story. Uh, but on the other side of things, generals in that. So she's kind of a tough character. And that's also on Netflix. So you can catch it there. Mm. Yeah. And we could also find you, YouTube has almost everything these days, or you could find it somewhere. Yeah. I know it only lasted one season, but I watched a little bit of it in preparation of this Ooh. interview of Ghost Rider. Um, oh, and... you watched the new Ghost Rider mystery, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> yes, I did. And uh, I don't think my kids are even aware of that. And yeah. was it, uh, it was one season of a remake of the original Ghost Rider. Is that what it was? Yes. And, yes. Um, uh, but it, boy, now that's when you were young. What was your age? What was your age in that one? You're I was active. sixteen. Sixteen, and boy, that had to be a kick to be in, uh, you know, a, a major role in a in a show at that age. It was a kick. I mean, I'd been doing TV series up to that point for for quite a bit of time. I mean, I started, you know, when I was nine in in a show, which was on PBS. That's the Shining Time Station, which is essentially like Thomas the Tank Engine and all those trains, but with like live act people also <laughs> that's what that show was and uh you know and then there was another show around that time that was a canadian show called book mice and yeah ghost writer the new ghost writer mysteries came around right before we ended up moving to los angeles so i moved right around that bridge point after that show uh, but it was really cool it was like it was on saturday morning on cbs so it was kind of fun to be like legitimately on a saturday morning broadcast because i watched those shows <laughs> right. And it's great to have, uh, even though sometimes you can get all these shows anytime you want, there's something, especially my era, a little bit older, but we, we didn't have VCRs, whatever. Saturday morning was the only time that you could really get involved with these Saturday morning cartoons that you loved. You can kind of watch them anytime now. But totally. still, it's so cool to watch a show like that and Steven Universe and others, uh, Captain Underpants, and just kind of just watch it on, whether, whether it's been broadcast already or not but watch it on that saturday morning when the parents are asleep and the kids get to, to, to enjoy some some animation on a saturday morning it's a relaxing time for the kids really if, and and mom <laughs> like and dad a meditation. too exactly when, when <laughs> the kids are relaxed mom and dad get to be relaxed as well speaking of relaxed we are going to relax for a moment and be right back right after this on everything old is new again come on back <laughs> Now, back to America's Entertainment Pop Culture Talk Show. Everything old is new again with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. No matter how your heart <laughs> is grieving, if you keep on believing the dream. That's Erica Luttrell, and we're here back on Everything Old is New Again with Douglas Viviani, and we're here with the next generation, Angelica Viviani and Leo Viviani, who are uh, enjoying a nice conversation, because we're doing something a little different this week. David Cohen's taken a week off, and he gave up his time, if you will, to the kids, and they wanted to see what life is all about now beyond the four walls, and we've been had the pleasure of speaking with Erica, Erica for the last two sections, and we're... In involved with a discussion about Steven Universe and Captain Underpants and other animated projects.
projects. But you're also involved in quite a bit of uh, live television as well, uh, such as Magnum P.I. and uh, other shows. And I, my question is, it's interesting how when these shows are made, like Magnum, the people that are watching know the characters in his group. But then a guest star has to come on involved and come on the show and sort of stand out and make their own way in a few minutes. And that must be a lot of pressure. And or how do you do that to make your character stand out, whether you're friends with the group or whether you're in opposition to the group, depending upon what show, um, to, to be a, a worthy right. adversary or a worthy friend of someone that every of the team that everyone knows already. But you've got to kind of catch up. How do you do that? Oh, gosh, isn't it? That is a good question. <laughs> um, it's a it's a fun challenge. Obviously, it's wonderful when you're you know more of a regular character, and so you can build like a camaraderie with everybody. I've done both things, you know, and you're there, and you kind of understand everyone's vibe, and you develop a character over time. But yeah, when you when you come in and you're like the new kid on the block, and you got to get used to everybody, and they got to get used to you, and you don't know who and what you're going to be encountering, they don't know who you're going to be. Um, <laughs> yes, it can be a bit of a challenge, but it's a challenge. I'm I'm always sort of excited to. Um, to goodness confront i'm like where are my words um <laughs> so yeah you just have to build a character that you feel um that you really resonate with and then you bring it in and, and it's sort of fun to see how that mixes in with the soup of what's already established that's great to hear because you do it so well and and uh and we're wishing you to all the best to look at you uh on the screen not just your voice but to see you as well as many times as possible so we'll keep uh, tabs Thank on you. that and and we could find uh, some of that on your website i'm pretty sure but uh, uh keep tabs on, on what you're doing through that and, and other ways I'm so much better with my social media than my website but am i even good with that uh. i don't know you know <laughs> well we found you so you're, you're it's working we did. <laughs> angelica you have a question uh yeah um so um what was your favorite episode to film and why uh steven universe or just anything uh i guess steven universe yeah goodness okay <laughs> favorite episode oh goodness i'm trying to think of like i have to get all my episode names down i don't always remember all the things because we don't have to memorize things and we get them on the day yeah um, <laughs> or just a couple days before but um i Let's see. Hit the Diamond was fun. <laughs> I love that one. That was a lot yes. of fun because it was, you know, Ruby and Sapphire kind of breaking out of their their regular sort of MO and just kind of being loving and sweet. So that was yeah. a lot of fun. Again, I, I honestly think, I mean, partly because it's fresh in my mind uh, and partly because I was so moved to watch it myself, but it was really quite great to do the, the movie and to kind of lose lose the memory of what that love was between Ruby and Sapphire and to like to have it be so powerful that you just kind of remember in this burst that was a lot of fun for me very yeah. good <laughs> uh, Leo you have a quick question I know into the microphone my man could you draw Sa Sapphire and cover at your first year in universe could can you I draw, draw them yeah. I've never tried can you <laughs> Leo does. He's very good with the art. He loves really? art. Right, Leo? You have got to send me your drawings. I want to see them. I did a painting of Sapphire once. Really? Yeah. Oh, I would love to see all of those. Thank you. Oh, we could we could do that, guys. We could send that send off. Send me those. I want to see. Want to do that, Leo? I haven't tried, so I'm not sure. I, maybe I could. I would have to practice. <laughs> You could sketch. You could sketch what Leo does. You can kind of use the trace pad on top of it, right? Uh, yeah, I'm going to trace, trace your work, but then that's plagiarizing. <laughs> oh, with for ten percent, it's okay, or a certain percentage. That's not, that's all right, okay, okay. I will commission you. I will. <laughs> we'll you have a question? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, how like what is the cast like? Like, are they? How is the cast? Pretty much. So sweet. <laughs> oh my gosh! Like some of the sweetest most creative most i mean like everything about the show to me having not having come into the show and not entirely being clear i hadn't watched a lot of it before i got involved and so i wasn't entirely clear on on what it was about but when i got in there and we and we did like for instance the first recording session i had with with charlene who plays ruby um you know rebecca wanted us to record together and uh, and that was so lovely. I mean, it's it's it was so important. Oh goodness, there goes my <laughs> there goes my eye. Um, it's so important um, to Rebecca to have like the emotions of the of the scenes be you know real. 
Um, so having us record together on the, the very first episode we did together was, was important to her. And I thought that that was wonderful because it established because some of the subsequent episodes we didn't record together, but we knew who we were. And so it was easy to sort of play off that dialogue. But um, everybody who I've worked with there, sometimes you have different groups that work together have been um, so warm and so lovely. We're all friends. We've all been to, you know, premiere, premiere parties together and other gatherings. And it's always so lovely to see their faces. Now, honestly. we've seen on TV sometimes where they do the animation and we see, like, the one person in the studio by themselves doing yeah. their job. And then we yeah. wonder how often uh, does it happen where you're in a room with others and interacting with them as opposed to just doing your lines by yourself? Totally. So it's it's a bit of a toss up. It depends. Uh, it depends on everybody's scheduling because everybody has other projects they're working on and all that. But I've found uh, for the most part with video games, uh, you're mm, by yourself more often than not. Um, although recently I've I recorded a game that isn't quite yet out yet, but like we did some partner sessions, which was new for me. I hadn't done that in games. But in animation, a lot of the time, they, they try their best, I think, to get as many people as they can in the room at the same time. Uh, because there's, there's like a through line, there's a narrative. There's like a half hour, an hour, they're, they're wanting to be cohesive. But sometimes it'll be two people, sometimes it'll be three. It's not always the whole cast. It's kind of rare. Uh, when a show manages to get everybody together all every time. Right. But it must be great yeah. to be able to interact like that. Angelica, you have another question? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, this is more of a, like, Pad Paracha-based question, but okay. uh, what do you think of Lars and the Off Colors that includes Pat Paracha in it? What do I think of them? Yeah. Oh, I think they're so rad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, I think, I don't know, they, they, they sort of take uh, um, being sort of unapologetically yourself to the next level, uh, and I think that that's really, really rad. Yeah, my um, phone like wallpaper is actually a fan art that I found on the internet of Lars and the Off Colors, which includes your character. So I just wanted. Oh to, yeah. Yeah, I I love the Off Colors and Pat Perez. Why do you like them so much? They're so cool. I, I just think they're cool. <laughs> they're really cool, and yeah. I like how like they they weren't they were uh, like weird in a way but then when they kind of like formed together they were like the off colors they were um like a team and everything so i just really like the off colors and pat Pratt. see what i i see in the show though uh, from the outside looking in is, is that it's a show that um it's it's not your usual animation there's going to no. be crying there's going to be angst there's going to be uh problems that need to be overcome that are overcome yeah. uh and and some lessons learned yeah. as you said about acceptance i think is the big one but you know about love and about a uh, community and so it's it's yeah. not you know and i'm not putting bugs bunny down but it's not bugs bunny you know what i mean it's, <laughs> it's a different cartoon it's not it, it, different. You it's different you know and it's totally it's, cool no, and yeah, it's it's I of feel, this day you know no i feel like you know rebecca and, and everybody in the Steven Universe team broke like really new ground with it and, and with the sort of sensitivity of the show and with the sort of truth of it. It can e it easily works for adults and for kids. I've, you know, watched it and seen things that I'm, that make me cry and that move me about not just my childhood experience, but my now experience you know and, so. and the animation too i mean even for leo at uh, eight right to be uh drawing these animated figures and being uh inspired by the animation yes. to do that if it was i'm being silly yes. but you know if it was just stick figures it wouldn't be something he'd be doing yeah, it's something creative and interesting leo why do you have an interest in drawing those characters do you think um, because I like to draw. And they're they're interesting, different kind of characters than usual. Yeah. There you go. So, uh, uh, <laughs> I used the leading question there. Yeah. I'm an attorney also, so uh, I, I used it. my skill <laughs> to get that out of him. But <laughs> anyway, we'll be back. It was right. A legitimate lead, Douglas. It was legitimate. <laughs> there you go. I'm interweaving the best of my skills as much as I can to promote uh, this terrific interview with Erica Latro. We're going to be back right at this and everything old is new again a dream is a wish your heart makes when you're fast asleep this is everything old is new again america's entertainment pop culture talk show 
with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. What about you? What about me? Well, you're here too. We're here together. Ah, uh, we sure are. And we're here together <laughs> with Eric on the Troll and Douglas Viviani <laughs> and Angelica Viviani and Leo Viviani. It's a Viviani Fest. And uh, we're enjoying a great time, something different on the radio, something totally different for your, the child in you, if you will, but also the actor, the actress, the, the uh, person that wants to really get involved with uh, their inner self, listen to and watch the show, Steven Universe. And uh, also our show, we're just having some fun to pass the time here in terms of the, the something different on the radio, and we're having a great time doing that. Leo has a question for... Two. Okay, go ahead. Go right ahead. Okay. What was the experience like doing the season two finale of Steven Universe? Oh, goodness. The season two finale. Can you remind me what happened in the season two finale? It's a I big sapphire it. finale, right? Yeah, what? it basically yeah. was when Garnet tells Steven the story of how Ruby and Sapphire first oh. met and how they first fused. Yeah. Yes. Goodness. What was it like recording it? I mean, working on, on Steven has always been incredibly like moving and just sometimes sort of emotionally challenging, which I didn't anticipate. So yeah, so doing that finale, I mean, it was both heartwarming and also incredibly moving. How about that, Leo? That sounds good. I know you have one more question, Leo, so let's get it now so you don't okay. get shut out by your sister here. Let's go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Why do you like acting? Why Ooh, do you good like question. acting? Good. Why do I like acting, Leo? I love that question. Okay. Um, let's see. I like acting because it gives me the opportunity to show other people how people other than them are. Mm. Sense, I Leo? like, <laughs> if that was clear, that but sense? I like to be able to embody a character that uh, maybe is unfamiliar to somebody and then they see it and then they recognize that it's not so scary and uh, that they can relate and, um, and it sort of might open up the world uh, for those people to new people. Like one of Dad's uh, sayings from one of the favorite shows, Infinite Diversity and Infinite Combination from Star Trek, basically means, right, guys? Everybody's, Star Trek! Everybody's different, but everybody is still the same. We all have the same commonality. We're all human, and we're all struggling to do the same things and, and have some fun, uh, basically, with our day uh, and other things yeah. that we want to do. But, uh, Angelica, you have a question or two? Yeah. Um, so, is, um, so tell me your thoughts on the relationship between Ruby and Sapphire fusing into Garnet. Oh, goodness. Yeah, I think it's uh, so incredibly <laughs> glorious and unique. Uh, so surprising and wonderful uh, to have their love embodied as such a grounded... Um, sort of future seeing i mean just what what a beautiful thing to have love embodied yeah <laughs> thank you okay and and i, I wanted to ask is you you do both now you do animation of course and you do live of course uh yes. and and so there's certainly a difference in the ability or, or what you do with animation when it's just your voice versus when you can access all of your body and, and facial expressions and so forth uh, which do you find more yeah. challenging uh to to do and to act in goodness they're both challenging in different ways i would say um the voice but it's it's also like i think acting in general is in and of itself challenging and they're just two completely different sort of mediums or ways of going about it so if it's just yourself in a room for instance and you're doing either animation or, or a game and you don't have anyone to play off of um you kind of have to create that world for yourself and rely a lot on your director to give you that context so, for instance, in, a, in if I'm recording a video game, I um, don't necessarily know if I'm, like, screaming at somebody who's 10 feet away, like, just based on the line, or if they're next, they're, like, right in front of my face. So the director has to be like, you're in a hole, and they're over there, and you're making an order or whatever. So so that's there's a lot of reliance on that. In a, in a live action, on camera sense, you are, you know, typically given... A full script. There's some instances where I haven't been given a full script <laughs> based on confidentiality and what have you. But you'll get to see all the beats laid out and you get to make a you make your own choices regardless. Um, and you do rely on a director regardless, but you get to make a lot more of your sort of come in with a lot more of your own uh, choices uh, in, in the on camera world and then kind of adjust 
based on who you're playing off of. So it becomes like this kind of living thing that two or three or four of you are creating together when you're on camera with somebody else. Cause you're just like, if they say something in a different way, you know, if you say, I love you and they say, really, <laughs> you'd react differently. Or if you say, I love you and they say, really, then you'd be like, yeah, you know, I mean, it's just different. The lines can be read in so many different ways and uh, and therefore you receive them uh, in so many different ways. So it's just it's just a completely different medium. Right. And it seems like more like a team, of course, as you can imagine, acting with people face to face and in the same room and so forth. Uh, live action it makes a little more uh, sense uh, to a sportsman, if you will. But uh, all of that makes sense. And, sure. And, uh, There's like an in the moment collaboration. Right. That's different. Right. Angelica? Yeah. Carry it. Have the ball. Uh, let's see. Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So did you ever think the show would get to where it is today when you first started? I had no idea. <laughs> I, it's funny because like I talked to my wife about this and how I really love, I mean, sort of to answer your question, Leo, you know, why do I act? Why do I like acting? I, I want to impact people. I, I noticed that my opinions have changed from shows that I've watched. I'm actually like a huge Star Trek fan. You mentioned Star Trek. So like I've seen every episode of The Next Generation. And there are interesting things about sort of my perception of the world that I've gained from watching that show. So, oh goodness, repeat the question. I've gone off on a tangent, Angelica. <laughs> so say the question again? Sure. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, did you ever think the show would get like this far, like to where it is today? Yeah. So, okay. Right. Um, so I couldn't have imagined it. I am so happy that it got here. And yeah, so talking to my wife, I'm always like wanting to leave these impressions on people. I I'm wanting the work that I do to, to make a difference and to, um, you know, change people's lives. You know, no small thing. That's all I want, just to change a life or two. So, <laughs> so when... <laughs> small thing, small thing, small thing, Angelica, not a big deal. But so when I... The shows, for instance, The Magic School Bus, I didn't realize was going to be a show that when I reached adulthood would have had this much impact on the childhoods of people my age uh, to the point where they bring it up now. If I meet them, they're like, what? You were The Magic School Bus? Like, it's shocking to me. I had no idea that would happen. And sort of by the same token, Steven Universe, I didn't. when I first started doing it, I didn't know really what it was or how deep it was. Or So now, like, this, the wave of appreciation I get for it is such a gift uh, I couldn't have imagined it. I couldn't have asked for anything more. Um, and I love it. And it validates why I do what I do. Thank and, you. Uh, we have, if, if you hear our show, or all of our listeners know that there's a Star Trek reference in every episode. So we are uh, able to... <laughs> To work that in there with no problem with the consent and and uh, help. Oh, do you have? So you hate Star Trek, is what you're saying, Doctor? No, I, it's the exact opposite. We love Star Trek so much. We work it in, <laughs> and in fact, we were lucky enough last week we had Anson Mount on the show, who's the new Captain Pike, and he just got signed for a new oh, episode on CBS. So I don't know if you're familiar with the new one, but the new oh, incarnation, totally. and he's excited about that. So we're um, we're really on the cutting edge here, if you will. We're trying to show off to to Erica Latrell, but. Uh, 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 I love it. Uh, you have any other questions, Angelica? Because we have about like three minutes left. So okay. I have two more questions, yes. and they're kind of, and they're kind of short. I guess. Okay, so, go right ahead, my um, girl. How do you? This is going to be kind of sad, but how do you feel about Steven Universe ending? I wept my eyes out. <laughs> yeah, me <laughs> too. So sad, and the way they ended it was so beautiful. I uh, it's just like tore my heart out, but it was wonderful. And what a what a totally complete package of a show. Yeah. I I felt the same way. I was like, no, I want more. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And so um, this one, this is kind of like a thing that like people have been doing. Um, but so do you believe in Steven? Oh, I totally believe in Steven. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The embodiment of believing in Steven. Yes, I do. And for the rest of us, what does that mean, guys? Tell us what a smidge of what that would mean. Like... I guess, like, in, like, my opinion, it kind of means, like, do you believe in, like, acceptance, like, love, and Steven? <laughs> I guess, like, do you believe in the show, I guess? <laughs> and that's nice to hear, and it's nice to hear that yeah. uh, you're 
interested in those themes, especially with your young brother. And, uh, and in these times when we're kind of stuck in the four walls, we get to know our family that much more. And we've been able to become that much closer because of er Erica Latrol and her participation in Steven Universe and now in Everything Old is New Again and all the other projects that you're involved with. We're very much interested in uh, what happens in the future with you. I want to thank you so much for spending the time to be with us here on Everything Old is New Again. Kids edition, let's put it that way. Yeah. And uh, we've really had a great time. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you guys so much. It was such a pleasure. That's great to hear. And we'll we'll go out here with the, the kids' uh, goodbye from Everything Old is New Again. I taped a long time ago, maybe four or five years ago. And uh, come on back next week to Everything Old is New Again. We'll be back to discuss more of your pop culture, entertainment, talk show uh, topics right here on Everything Old is New Again. Also, when I grow, and when I grow up, I want to be a movie maker. <laughs> I want to be a dancer. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Everything's new again, people. Every Bye. Everything's going to be all new again, again. Let's be living. Dreams of your weaving. Wonders are waiting to start. Well, this is Karen Allen from Raiders of the Lost Ark and Zara Man, and I'm here to tell you about my wonderful store and website, Karen Allen Fiber Arts. It's Karen Allen FiberArts.com. I carry all kinds of really unique gifts and women's clothing lines from all over the world, from small studios that are things you won't see anywhere else. And if you're looking for a gift or something for yourself, please get in touch with us. We would love to help you find that special thing. That's Karen Allen FiberArts.com. You've been listening to Everything Old is New Again, America's pop culture entertainment talk show. Find us on the web at Everything Old is New Again. Biz. That's dot biz. See you next week. Same bad time, same bad station.